ABC Sports presents... College Football Today. Today on ABC, the fifth meeting between Notre Dame and Alabama. A dramatic series that started in the 1973 Sugar Bowl. Tom Clements passes to Dave Casper to set up an Irish field goal to put him into the lead. Casper catching it despite double coverage. And then one of the most famous plays in all of college football. Irish quarterback Tom Clements passing from the end zone to Robin Weber. A daring gamble as Notre Dame beats Alabama 24-23 and wins the national championship. Today, quarterback Mike Shula will lead the Crimson Tide against the Fighting Irish. Alabama has never beaten Notre Dame. The Tide's second ranked in the nation this week, so once again, there is an extra edge to the game. And certainly there is no reason to believe that today's game from Legion Field in Birmingham will be any different from the other four. A game to remember. In all four of these Alabama-Notre Dame games, an All-American center for the Tide, now an assistant coach. His thoughts just before kickoff. There's no question uh, not beating Notre Dame is something, particularly this 73 game that I've had to live with a, uh, a very long time. It was a chance for Alabama to win a national championship, something that uh, I and my teammates went to Alabama to do. And twice, 73 and 74, we were deprived of that opportunity by losses to Notre Dame. I look forward to today. Can't change those games. Uh, nothing can. But I would like a little satisfaction, a chance to beat Notre Dame. Well, they have their chance. Both teams are on the field, and we are ready for the kickoff. Notre Dame will kick off. Alabama will receive the middleman for the Tide, Bobby Humphrey, the starting tailback. Very quick. John Carney kicks it deep, way back, no return. Nailed it all the way beyond the field of play. And here comes Alabama now to the offense. Shula, Good, Humphreys, Bell, the wide receiver. Humphrey will be a very important personality in the game today. What with Gene Jokes on the sidelines injured. Albert Bell is their big play man. He makes the big catches. They use him a lot as a decoy. Maybe a while before you see him getting the ball. Then on the other hand, he might get it on the first play. We'll see. As Alabama comes to the attack, first down from their 20. Shula sends Humphrey in motion and hands it off inside to his fullback, carrying his Perry Good. Perry Good, remember, a couple of years ago was a starting tailback and had a big ball game against Boston College. The offensive front for Alabama, anchored by Wes Neighbor. Wes is a big man, fully capable of taking on any nose guard, I think, in the country one-on-one. -on -one. He is a bell cow in the offensive front for Alabama. Their weights up front are 270, 270, 250, 250, and 290. There's plenty of help. They are strong right, double wide. Bell to the bottom of the picture. It is second down and 10. The ball goes to Humphrey this time. Cuts it back against the frame. Breaks it out to the 30-yard line for a first down. Okay, Bama! Tackle made by Dave Butler, the outside linebacker for Notre Dame. And again, it just seems to jump out at me, Tim Brent. That the outside people of Notre Dame defensively will be pressured some. You see the Butler and Gordon are the two outside backers now. And uh, Dave Butler getting more playing time today because uh, of the injury to Cedric Figaro. They're both good ones, but may be lacking a little bit in foot speed. First down for the Tide from the 30. They look into the middle this time with Humphrey. He's 6'1", 185, a sophomore out of Birmingham. As a matter of fact, grew up just across the street, literally, from Legion Field. Gain of a yard. Pretty good outside people are going to be a few. They have to maintain that outside leverage. They know they don't have the speed that Alabama has, so they want to force everything back into the middle where they have help, where they've got pursuit lanes. If they have a breakdown, you heard Lou Holtz say it in the pregame show. He's concerned. They won't only move the chains, but they'll light up the scoreboard. The Tide looking now at second down and nine. Ball just beyond their own 31-yard line. About 112 degrees down on that rug. Shula, late turnaround, late handoff, scramble for the ball. Alabama keeps it. Shula saw the ball come loose. Good went by him. They missed the handoff and almost turned it over. You need to 
thing about Alabama, and they are minus five in the giveaway takeaway ratio, so they do make mistakes. That one was in the breadbasket. He just didn't close up on it. But the key is Alabama makes its mistakes early in the ball game and then comes back strongly at the latter part. They've had scored opponents 76 to 34 in the second half. A loss on that play of about four yards. Ball comes back near the 27, where it is third down now and 14. Now let's see if Bell is the man. Bell, Richardson goes deep. They swing it out, and Shula overthrows. His intended to receive the fullback good coming out of the backfield. Alabama throws to its backs a lot. Richardson was on a post pattern deep and could have been had, I think, because he had turned on the Jets and broken free. But the pass goes incomplete, and now in comes Chris Moore to do the punting. As Notre Dame's return people, Troy Wilson goes back along with Milt Jackson. Troy Wilson is a cornerback. Milt Jackson is a wide receiver. Chris Moore is a freshman last year, averaged 45 plus yards per punt. Big tall rangy youngster came here from a high school career as a quarterback. Shoots it a mile high, gets a tight spiral. It is a howitzer shot. It goes all the way down to the end zone. Holy smokes, what a kick. Milt Jackson running along with it decided I'm not going to mess with it. It's a tail dragger. It'll probably go deep, and it did. But it'll go in the books as a 73-yard punt for Chris Moore. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish have had 23 unanimous All-Americans in their rich football tradition, more than any other university. Chris Moore's first punt of the day, certainly man's eyes, was 73 yards. And up comes Notre Dame, first down at the 20. Cornell Taylor, Mark Green line up. Behind Steve Berline, Tim Brown breaks out of the stack eye and goes out as a wide receiver. And up the middle goes the Irish. It is Mark Green, the sophomore from Riverside, California, ripping it up for 15 yards and a first down. I guarantee you we'll see a lot of this this afternoon. Notre Dame is going to run right at him, try to alleviate that speed. Now, they say speed is only good if you're chasing somebody or if you're running away from somebody. But they're going to go right at him. Lou Holtz told us that early. Big gainer. They got into the secondary, and if they can do that this afternoon, they'll put some points on the board. Irish first down at the 35. First play, picks 15. Same alignment. Brown is staying in the alignment this time, but... It goes to Tim, and Tim Brown spinning in the middle will have about three yards to the 38. This is the offensive start now for Notre Dame. Berline, your quarterback. Taylor and Green and Brown lined up, sometimes, as you will see, in that stack eye. With the key people, I think, today, because of the heat, being Green, whom you've already seen run for 15, and the big freshman, Anthony Johnson, 220 pounds, from his hometown, which is South Bend, the home of Notre Dame. So, consequently, I think the presence of Johnson will be more and more obvious uh, today particularly when it is so hot but he's going to get better every week too they go inside to the fullback Cornell Taylor who's a 215 pound senior from La Puente, California and he gets it over the 40 to the 41 the offensive front for the Irish waves in Askin 270 Freeman 265 Lanza 255 Heffern 265 and Sproul 265 Joel Williams big targeted tight end 64235 235 and he alternates with Andy Heck who's 66 and 235 Notre Dame will use that tight end today, too, to drag him across that middle. An effective play against Alabama. Bill Jackson, number six in the ball game, as you saw him come right to you. Third down and four for the Irish. Furline, little swing pass out to Green. Mark bobbles the ball, and he hit the ground back at the 44, short of the first down by a yard. Lost his balance and couldn't keep moving. And so, consequently, it comes up just short. And in will come the punting team for Notre Dame. Alabama's defense lines up this way. And the key people I think you'll have fun watching today will be Ricky Thomas, the strong safety number 34. He comes up and plays like a linebacker. And Cornelius Bennett, who will be all over the field. Dan Sorensen is in the punt now for the Irish. He's averaging on the year just under 41 yards per kick. Greg Richardson is the punt return man for Alabama. There's some pressure on it, and they almost got it. But it's a pretty good kick by Sorensen. He runs uh, Richardson well back, and Notre Dame's going to knock this one dead inside the 10-yard line. Richardson probably should have taken the punishment and caught the ball and returned it. It results in a 48-yard punt for Sorensen, and Alabama's second possession will be at their own eight. Now with Alabama's second possession, they have it first down on their eight-yard line, 
And again, you think back over this series, and Alabama has made some mistakes. In fact, the last time they played was here, and uh, a couple of fumbles. They traded fumbles, and then Alabama made another one down on the four, and it resulted in an Notre Dame win. So right here, it's, uh, I think, a time to be very careful. And probably very basic. They give the ball to Humphrey. He pops out of there and comes all the way out to the 17. Down a little crack and just blew it open. Randy Wells and Troy Wilson brought him down for the Irish. That big old offensive line firing off now. You said stay basic. And hey, this is one-on-one. -on -one. Watch the drive out of there. They're off the ball in a hurry. They open the hole, and now by the time he comes through, the hole's wide open. And he put Humphrey in the secondary. He's got tremendous speed, and he's got those good reflexes of a talented back. And he's got a big start. He's carried three times, picked up 25 yards. It's second down and one. Humphrey in motion, leaves good back there. Carey's got the ball, swings outside, has the first down as he puts his helmet on uh, Mark Spence and lunges ahead and picks up the first down for the tie. Carey Good has apparently rehabilitated the knee that was operated on and has made the adjustment from tailback to fullback quite nicely. We saw Kerry Good as a tailback amass nearly 300 total yards of offense against Boston College two years ago. He scored three touchdowns, and then in the second half, he hurt his knee. Working now, a strong left side. Humphrey, the deep man, Good in behind him. Shula goes to Humphrey, cuts back against the grain, and the Irish corral in just about the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard penetration by Wally Klein. More on the story of Bobby Humphrey now with Al Troutwig. Keith, you're looking at the place where Bobby Humphrey grew up. Yes, that little project across the street from Legion Field. A couple of years ago, when Kerry Good was having a great night against Boston College, Bobby Humphrey walked across the upper deck selling Coca-Colas. Well, today, Kerry Good and Bobby Humphrey are in the backfield together for Alabama. And look how close it was from his house to the field. You think Bobby Humphrey had Crimson Tide fever? You bet he did. Right now, it is second down, 11. He indeed stayed at home. Little shovel pass ahead. It goes to Kerry Good and Good's across the 30 out to the 31. And got to go to the 34 for the first down. Tremendously effective play when you have them laying their ears back and coming now to try to put pressure on, on Shula. They wanted to make penetration early to, to stop Humphrey. So you run him inside. It's run blocking, which sets it up, and then you just dribble a little shuffle pass inside. Look at West Neighbors now, the center, 54. That's Wally Klein he's taken on, and he just rides him far enough out of the play to make it effective, doesn't he? Got to keep those hands in, though. Bo Wright is in the backfield now, number 40, a junior from Pritchard, Alabama. Shula's pass down the middle of the field is incomplete. There was double coverage on Greg Richardson. Marv Spence and Troy Wilson, the two corners, had eaten him up down the middle, and there was no chance on that one. And they are still using Al Bell as something of a decoy, but he will see the ball when the time is right. It brings in the punting team once again as Wilson drops deep for Notre Dame. Last time Moore hit it, remember, it went 73. Gets it out, not quite as prodigious as the last one, but still a very good one. It is taken by Wilson. Wilson trying to find a little daylight, and he is knocked down at the 33-yard line. That was a 43-yard punt by Chris Moore, and he hit it into the wind. It's a pretty good little breeze blowing from right to left as you watch the game. More importantly than the yardage, Keith, was the hang time. It was 4.75 hang time. Uh, so if it's in the air almost five seconds, that cover team has a chance to get down and smother the ball carry. They murdered in their opening game. South Carolina is now giving Nebraska quite a battle. It's 13-10 in the third quarter. The two teams met only once before, and at that time, back in the 60s, the South Carolina quarterback was a fellow named Dan Reeves, who now works in Denver. Keith? That South Carolina team gave Georgia fits, too, uh, last week. There, there. Joe Morrison got him cranked up after a slow start. From the 33 now, for Notre Dame. First down for the Irish. They come out with two backs. Anthony Johnson, the tailback. And Tom Monahan in his fullback. Burline, your quarterback. And Tim Brown is wide to the top of the picture. And down goes Burline. Cornelius Bennett. Ball comes loose. Cornelius Bennett 
looping around the outside. Dex Furline and the ball comes free. This guy practices every day like he's trying to make the team. He comes through untouched. It looked like it was going to be the back side of the play. It's that waggle play where everybody goes to the left, Furline comes back to the right. But he didn't have any protection. The pulling guard that was supposed to get out there and protect him never got there because this guy, Cornelius Bennett, runs a 4-5-40. He is fast. It is not a fumble, however. It is down back at uh, near the 25. See 65 right here? He's the pulling guard. Never gets over there. Furline felt that mistake, too. For the loss is from the 33 back to about the 25. Braxton Banks comes in now at the fullback position. Furline out of the shotgun. Little shovel pass ahead to Banks, the fullback. And Alabama eats him up at the 26. So the Alabama defense now starting to swarm a little more. Notre Dame is a little bit shaken right now, too. You can see it on that play. It wasn't crisp. They were hesitating a little bit. You know, this is their second possession, and it's the first time all year that Notre Dame has not scored on its first possession. All three games, and each drive was more than 70 yards. So they got the offense in gear early. Here, they're shaking a little bit. Ball at the 27. It is third down. 16. Burline feels pressure, gets his pass away down the middle, and it is incomplete. The pass was intended for Milt Jackson. Diving for the ball, Kermit Kendrick couldn't come up with it. Alabama this time came with six linebackers. They took Slaughter out. They brought Phillip in, Phillip Brown in. Here comes Cornelius Bennett again from the outside. See now, hey, they're coming and forcing from the outside. And Burline has to step in. What he runs into, Keith, are four more linebackers. And now, fourth down, the Irish to punt. Sorensen's last kick, 48-yarder. Richardson back again. No pressure this time on Sorensen. The kick is away. Good hang time on it. Greg's up to make the catch. He's going to return this one. Bounces outside, around the corner. On his way, one man. Gone. Touchdown, Alabama. Tiffin, knuckleball over, just over. That long streak of 108 is now 109, but there have been some breathtakers along the way, and that was one. Randy Wells got a hand on it. Almost blocked the extra point, but here's the return now. Watch this. Once he steps up and then gets to the outside, the wall is set up, and then it's Katie bar the door. Richardson has great speed, 4-4 speed. But look at the guys out in front of him now. Look There's who makes the key block, though, that turns him loose on the last man. Freddie Robinson Bennett. is out there. Cornelius Bennett is out there. They all throw the block. But the wall was set up perfectly. You could tell. After the sack on Furlon, Notre Dame was shaken up. They're still shaken up. And now they have to regroup. I don't know if they're going to be able to. The six-yard punt return puts Alabama on the scoreboard at 5.23 to go in the first quarter. And the Tide will now kick off to the Irish with Tim Brown, the deep man for Notre Dame. And Tiffin kicking into the wind. Wind's going to knock it down quite short. Up at the 10. Tim Brown is down around the 22. On, when you're covering a punt, everybody has a lane. They have to come back, they have to defeat the blocker, and they have to get to the ball carrier. Here, everybody came down the middle. You can see the person that had the outside lane is nowhere around. The outside's open. Once Alabama set up that wall, look at Cornelius Bennett at the bottom of your screen. He's going after Sorensen. Doesn't even have to really go after him. Oh, could have been called for a block there, but I think Sorensen turned his, his back. No clip. Good block. 
And so uh, Notre Dame with Terry Andrzak in at quarterback for this series will start just short of its 22. Good be Berline was shaken up on that sack a while ago by Bennett. He took a body slam to the surface. Goes to Johnson, Anthony Johnson, a tough runner. Has eight yards as he gets out just past the 29. <laughs> Johnson has those Joe Bellino type legs. They're big, they're strong. He keeps them moving and driving at all times. He's going to be a good one, I think, Timmy. Whirling Dervish. Just a freshman, 220 pounds. Alvin Miller now is in there at a wide receiver position. Tim Brown is out. Reggie Ward is in. Andrzak hands the ball off to Johnson again. Goes for his first down. He is hit right on the line of scrimmage and drilled back. But it depends on the mark, and the mark looks pretty good from here. Cliff Thomas made the first hit for Alabama coming from a nose guard position. It is a first down for Notre Dame. The referee today is John Soffy. Side judge is Al Granning. Umpire is P.T. Williams. Field judge Joe Dorenzo. Linesman uh, William Cronin. Back judge Charlie Horton. And the line judge is Ed Dudley. It's a mixed crew of Central Independent Officials and Southeastern Conference. First down, Andrew Zach gives the ball to Reggie Ward. The wide receiver, Ward, turns the corner, and he's out past the marker for another Notre Dame first down. And now they're starting to show a little grit in the offensive movement as the line that time got a very good surge. Notre Dame, Tim, has uh, run the ball seven times and used seven different ball carries. They're also starting to go to the corners a little bit now. They're going to try to start spreading that defense out a little bit. Use a little bit more motion. They have to do that, and they, they really have to get their tight end into this ballgame. Tom Monahan is back in at a fullback position as they go to a power eye set here. Double wide, bottom of the picture. And Andrzak coming down the line is being pursued, gets away from that pursuit, and then takes the punishment at the 45. Hit by Britton Cooper, cornerback. He's the first man, a senior from Mobile for Alabama. Alabama. Yards. Alabama defensively is using a lot of combinations. They're playing man-to-man -man defense with the linebackers. They're playing zone deep in the secondary. And they're using a lot of linebackers. They're using linebackers at down positions, too. They're using five and six linebackers. Oh, he's got about 12, doesn't he? He said he'll play about 11 today. <laughs> Second down, eight yards for Notre Dame. The ball at their own 45. Alabama leading 7-0 first quarter. Andrew Zach's pass to the sidelines. Good to Reggie Ward. Hits the sidelines at the Alabama 46. And so now the Irish are on the other side of the mountain as Ricky Thomas shoved him out of bounds. Notre Dame needs a couple of plays like that, too. You can see that the Irish now are starting to regain their composure just a little bit. Nothing fancy about this. It's a high percentage pass. It's just a down and out. What they did is they used the wide receiver to clear out the defensive cornerback over there. Ray Dumas, number 82, is in now. The sophomore from St. Louis for Notre Dame at wide receiver. Ward is out. Miller is the right man to the top of the picture. Pitch back to the tailback. Nope, that's Dumas. The Dumas is lined up in the tailback position. And Alabama's defensive people string it out to the sidelines, and uh, it's going to be a loss of about a yard as Brett Cooper again was over there. Hard to run outside on Alabama. Alabama's loading up again. They just brought in George Bethune, another linebacker. This is the type of situation that the, the Crimson Tide just thrives on second and long. Juan Francisco, number 32, is on the field now for the Irish. Andrew Zach out of the shotgun. Quarterback draw up the middle. And they bring him down around the 40 with Bethune and Gilbert, two backers, making the stop. So it'll be third down and short now for the Irish. You see the time remaining. First quarter, Alabama scoring on a 66-yard punt return by Greg Richardson. Keith, you can really tell now that the Irish are very concerned about where Cornelius Bennett is, and I don't blame them. 
But the bottom line is he's having an effect, even if he's not personally putting the pressure on. If they go away from him, he's affecting their offensive scheme. Still working out of the shotgun with Andrzejczyk. See him creep up. It's a little different alignment here as he starts moving now. They almost have two of them moving at the same time that time. Andrzejczyk is sacked way back on the Notre Dame 46-yard line by nose guard Kirk Jarvis. Kurt Jarvis right in the middle of your screen. He's double teamed right now. Now they keep pressuring. He comes. He is the roommate of Mike Shuler. Two completely separate guys. Different type of guys. Quite a bodyguard to have for a roommate. 6'2", 266 pounds. Sorensen in to punt. Kick is away. Richardson circles under it at the 14. Comes up the sidelines and gets out to about the 20. With a minute and a half to go in the first quarter, it's first down. Alabama at their 20. And here's a quick visit to the Notre Dame campus. Where belief informs scholarship, where values... Begin. Bobby Humphrey carrying on first down and 10 from the 20 will pick up a couple of yards on the play. And it'll be second down, eight for Alabama, leading seven to nothing. And let's pause five seconds so all of our stations can tell you who they are. Second and eight. Al Bell will go wide to the top of the picture. Richardson to the bottom. It's Good and Humphrey lined up behind Shula. Notre Dame right now showing a five-man front. Pitch back to Humphrey. And Humphrey is gang tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Wally Klein and Brandy Wells, the strong safety, had come up almost into a linebacker position and helped on the hit. Something we haven't seen Notre Dame do this year in the games that we've covered. They brought their secondary players except for the weak side safety everybody up tight close to the line and when the ball was snapped wells came across the line and run support almost in a blitz type scheme and he made the play it's third down long seven Shula's pass was thrown behind bobby humphrey and so in comes Chris Moore to punt as we have nine seconds to play in the first quarter. Remember last year we saw Chris Moore. He was kicking against Auburn near the end of the season. Had a broken leg. Yeah. His left leg was broken. He had a cast on it. Still came out and punted and averaged close to 47 yards. When he nails it, he can nail it. And we just saw it in the first punt of the day. 73, the longest of his career. Of course, that included a pretty good sized bounce into the end zone. Troy Wilson to return it for the Irish. Moore's kick this time not particularly good as Wilson comes up for a fair catch at the Notre Dame 44-yard line. That will be a 34-yard punt. And time has run out in the first quarter. So after the first 15 minutes in Birmingham, it's Alabama 7, Notre Dame nothing. Potion. But right now his Warriors are down by a score of 7-0. But Notre Dame starts this possession with very good field position out on their own 44. Bill Jackson and Tim Brown go wide as Steve Berline returns now at quarterback. Cornelius Bennett is off the field for a rest in this series. Berline on a little delay gives to Cornell Taylor, the fullback. And Taylor will have a couple of yards up to the 46 in the first quarter. There were no penalties. There were no turnovers. And it took only 27 minutes to play. And everything was virtually even, too, when you look at the numbers. Statistically, Notre Dame had a couple more first downs than Alabama did. You scored it on points. I'd say Cornelius Bennett got a pretty good look, couple of flicks in there. But the only play thus far is Richardson's punt return to 73 yards. That's the difference. Second down and eight for the Irish. Berline checking off. Freezing the Alabama defense and breaks Taylor over the left side. And Cornell goes inside the 35 to the 34-yard line and a first down before Ricky Thomas brought him down. 
He checked it off, found what he wanted, had the Alabama defense off balance, and they blew a hole for him. Well, that's what they were trying to do. You saw him go to the corners a couple times. Now, all they're doing here is zone blocking against Alabama. They come out, and they hit him with a quick opener. Bernard Taylor got into that secondary fairly quickly. So now the Irish manifesting the threat here in the early moments of the second quarter. Berline pitches it outside. Mark Green is caught behind the line of scrimmage and dropped back on the 38 by Philip Brown. Alabama has kept people from running the ball outside effectively all year long. Philip Brown's had a sack in every game. He's an active young player. They say he'll get a couple of sacks today. That's what they told me. He told me that. He too stayed home to play. He's from Birmingham. He's a junior. Second down, 13. Reggie Ward back in for the Irish, number 83. Berline back to throw it. Throws it underneath. Going to be picked off. Nope. I tell you, that's a heady play by Joel Williams. The ball was off the tight end's hands, right into the hands of Greg Gilbert, an inside backer who had dropped, and Joel Williams had the presence of mind to realize that he was going to catch the ball, and he just belts it. See the fake the green there? They tried to send him down the middle and clear it out so that the tight end could come underneath. He was open, but the ball hit his hands. Now, here comes Williams. You're right. It just separates him from the ball. That's a great play. And it's third down and a long 13. It's close to 14, actually. Great play, but he should have made the catch. Right. Cornelius Bennett is now back in on third and long. Berline rolls out, pressures on, pass away, under pressure. Brown can't hold on on the sideline. Tim Brown. Ricky Thomas was trailing on the play, but Brown ran out of real estate and couldn't hold the ball. Lou Holt said he's going to get it to get the ball to Tim Brown more this year than ever and he's been true to his word Brown has touched the ball 41 times already this year last season he got the ball 43 times in the entire season and that's running receiving and returns look at this it's fourth down and 13 and Notre Dame's going to go with it from their own 38 no they're not either I thought for a minute they were going to go with it but they're not Berline is going to punt it I think. Well, he did. Straight up. Takes an Alabama bounce back up the field. That's almost a negative punt. That's his second punt this season, Keith, and he did have a negative punt the first time against Michigan State. It was a quick hit. It went off the side of his foot and got a backward bounce. Biting, uh, Georgia boy biting South Carolina on that one. He's from Valdosta. So just down the road, uh, from Columbia, South Carolina. Everything relatively even at the first quarter of play. Notre Dame had the advantage in first down. The big punt returned by Richardson is the difference. I said that that punt that Berline had against Michigan State was minus three. I checked it. It is 19-yard punt. So he's gotten both punts now off the right side of his foot. Alabama goes to work now from their own 27-yard line with a first down. That last punt, incidentally, was 11 yards. Terry Good is thrown down by Mike Povaleski for no game. Here's Al. Keith, I'm sitting on the 50-yard line with the associate athletic director at Alabama, Sister Carol Ann, Stanford, Connecticut. How did that come about? Well, when Ray was coach with the Giants, he made me honorary assistant coach for the Giants. Then when he came to Alabama, he said, don't forget, I hired you. You're still my coach. And at the same time, Bill Parcell said, I'm renewing your contract. So what happened is Ray said, all right, you're still my coach. But he said, I'm also making associate athletic director. And how are you supporting the team today? Well, instead of being a player coach, I'm a prayer coach. Thank you. Keith, by the way, Ray wanted Sister Carol Ann to wear a crimson habit, but they don't make him in that color yet. So we'll just keep praying from the 50-yard line. Back to you. <laughs> Little swing pass did not work, as you saw there. I tell you, when you get into a ball game like this one, you want all the help you can get, don't you? <laughs> He's pulling out all the stuff, didn't he, against Notre Dame? They brought their priests. Mike Shula, slow starting today, one out of five for six yards. He really hasn't thrown the ball that well. He's thrown the ball behind two receivers, and that was not a very good pass. Third down and nine now. Lobs this one over to Terry Good. Good's got uh, some help out in front, but he needed some in the more immediate area as Brandy Wells 
Had him in his sights and got him short of the first down, and the Hyde will have to punt. Troy Wilson and Milt Jackson. Two of them now dropping back for the Irish. As Moore comes in with a light breeze at his back. He's at 73, 43, and 34. On his three punch. Didn't get all of that one either as Jackson comes up on the run to get it. Milt dodges a couple, but they'll get him just short of the 40-yard line. Put it down on the 38. A 38-yard punch by Moore with 11.18 to go in the first half. So once again, Notre Dame will possession the ball in good field position, trailing Alabama 7-0. Well, if you live in the Southland, that noise you just heard was in Columbia, South Carolina, where a freshman running back named Harold Green has just scored his third touchdown of the day, and South Carolina's Gamecocks are positioned for a monumental upset, leading third-ranked Nebraska now 24-20 with less than four minutes to go. Keith? You know, there were so many teams uh, that had a chance, I thought, to win the national championship here that uh, the one that won it would certainly have to go undefeated. The way things are going this year, I'm not sure that's necessarily so anymore. Well, everybody seems to be conceding the thing to Miami, but Pittsburgh and Florida State could both jump up and fight them. Right. First down. Ball of 38. Terry Andrzak is back in at quarterback for this series for the Irish. And he hands it off to the up man. That's Brunel Taylor. And Taylor gets the ball out across the 40 to the 42. A pick up close to four yards on that carry. It's sort of been, if you look at that, I guess you'd say we've had nothing but a tango offense so far, but that's not really so. Because uh, each team has been able to move the ball on one or two explosive moments. It's been fun. Notre Dame's had it four times, punted four, four times. Yep. Same for Alabama. Four possessions, four punts. Second down, six. For the Irish. This time the tailback, uh, Mark Green, carries the ball, and he's nailed down right about the line of scrimmage. Give him maybe a yard or so on it as Cornelius Bennett. Quite in. And in the tackle. Next Saturday on ABC, the Miami Hurricanes with Benny Testaverde, which seems to be another concession on the Heisman there, will take their unbeaten record to West Virginia, Morgantown. Some of you in the eastern part of the country will see that one. The rest of you will be watching that old traditional Oklahoma and Texas from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas here on ABC. It's third down and five for Notre Dame. Andrew Zach options, turns up field, gets his first down, and then some. Hard run by Terry as he gets the ball to the 40-yard line of Alabama. You could feel the breath of Cornelius Bennett coming from the backside, too. It's a good thing he turned the corner when he did. Look at him now. He's looking down the line. You can see him read. There's nobody out there. They had already gone outside for the pitch man. So then he just turns it up and gets a block and makes a nice gain out of it. First down Notre Dame in Alabama territory. They marked him just short of the 40. With 10 minutes to go in the first half. Alabama leading 7-0. Andrew Zach gives inside to the fullback. And that's a good five-yard pickup again by Taylor. They mark him inside the 35-yard line. And when you're picking up five, six yards on first down, you, you're going to move the chains a lot. Taylor now with five carries with 32 yards. As you look at scores of the top ten teams, and Anthony Johnson checks into the ball game for Notre Dame. Opens up your offense when you have that situation of second and five. You can do virtually anything. Tailback, Anthony Johnson carries and loses on the play. Knocked down at the 36-yard line. He lost a yard. Andrzak or Johnson was a little bit confused on that play. There was a hesitation there. And they looked out of sync. They didn't have the rhythm they normally have on that play. Joel Williams checks back in at tight end, replacing Andy Heck, and probably brings a play with him for third down and six. Alvin Miller, the big wide receiver, has not seen the ball today. The ball is loose. Alabama's got it. Greg Gilbert covered it. But that play was made by Kurt Jarvis. Oh, what a job he did. 
Take a look right here at 95. See, he's lined up on an angle. He'll do a spin move to get free. Now watch. He's already clocked the hole. Now he spins right into the ball carrier. And then he strips the ball. The ball's loose right there. It's on the ground. Alabama football. What a great job by Jarvis. High takes over on the turnover. First one of the day at the 36-yard line. Perkins says if there's a better nose guard in the country, he hasn't seen him. Hoss Johnson, Larry Rose, West Neighbors, Bill Condon, and Joe King. The big fellows up front for the tide now on first down. Pitch goes to Bobby Humphrey. Gets a block on the corner and turns it to the 42. And Mike Kovaleski, inside backer for the Irish, brought him down. Mike, a senior out of Newcastle, Indiana. This is Alabama's best field position in starting a possession. Second down, four and a half. Lou Holtz has now passed 10 miles in his stroll today, but then never stops on the sideline. Shula gives up uh, inside to the up man, uh, Kerry Good, and Good is close to his first down at the 46. Time remaining, first half. Perkins and Holtz are both very fine tacticians. They adjust as the game develops as well as any coaches in the game. Just short, third down, they need a foot and a half. Shula keeps it and has the first down. Moving over the right side behind Neighbors and Condon. Moves the football to the 48-yard line. Lou Holtz was telling me prior to the game, I asked him what kind of practice week Notre Dame had. He said, well, it rained a lot, and we had to practice indoors, and that threw us off a little bit. Yeah, they've had some tough weather in Midwest. Ooh. First down, 48-yard line. Humphrey goes in motion for Alabama, leads good the long back. Shooter wants to throw. Gets it off to Bell, wide open. Al Bell, touchdown. They would use him as a decoy, run him around out there for a while, and then bingo. You just saw it. He is a big play guy, and he touched the ball 44 times last year, and 39 of them were for a first down or a touchdown. They sent him right down the middle. It looked like a two deep zone by Alabama, and nobody even saw him coming. His speed may not put him in a class of its own, but where he is, it doesn't take long to call roll. Van Tiffin trying to make it. 10 straight points after, and he does at 6.57 to go in the first half. It is now 14 to nothing. Take another look from this level. Good protection for Shula. Now, Shula's locked on him right away. You see, he never looked at another receiver. He saw Bell clear the linebackers in the secondary without anybody even coming close. Take a look at Bell now. See if anybody at all even sees him. He's the second receiver in. They're in a zone, and once he gets in the seam, nobody's deep. And I'll guarantee you, once he gets back there, nobody's going to catch him. Big play guy, Albert Bell. Next Saturday, Heisman candidate Vinny Testaverde leads number one Miami against West Virginia. Or sixth rank Oklahoma takes on Texas. Coverage begins with college football today. More fireworks in Columbia. Now a Todd Milliken touchdown for the Corn Huskers with a minute and 50 seconds remaining. And we're watching every play. Nebraska now leads South Carolina 27-24. Keith? Well, that's a dandy they've got going down in Columbia, isn't it? Al Bell from Los Angeles. He's a senior. I don't think he'll have to look too far for a job next year. No, sir. He's rated highly by all the scouts. Pippen will kick off, wind at his back. Nails it well to the end zone and out of bounds. And it's going to be, it was inbounds when it cleared the plane of the goal line. It'll be a touchback to the plane. But there is a flag, Keith. Way back up on the 30-odd yard line. 
Quayle, I can remember the conversation that you and I had with Lou Holtz in Notre Dame, and he said when Michigan State jumped on them early, they had that interception, ran it back for a touchdown, that his guys, you could feel it on the bench. There was some deflation. Well, you got a hold call against Notre Dame. That's the first penalty of the ball game, and you've got uh, just under seven minutes to play in the first half. There are the officials we gave you earlier. Some of you, I'm sure, remember Chick Brenning. Of course, Charlie Horton was a uh, safety and tailback at Vanderbilt. All of them played their football in some place or other. It's a mixed crew from the Central Independent Association and the SEC. The receivers penalties decline there'll be Notre Dame ball first and ten on the 20 yard line Alabama deciding that uh, that just soon happened there rather than kick it again that's what we have for you at halftime Jim Lampley in New York Al Cock we got with us here in Alabama Tim Grant will be into the project <laughs> at the State Fair in Dallas Texas 6.57 to go in the first half. It's now 14 to nothing, Alabama. And the Fighting Irish come up to Steve Berline back in at quarterback. Tom Monahan fullback. Mark Green tailback. Tim Brown wide man. And Berline drops it off for Green. And Mark's got a hole. And tucks it away. And takes on two tighters up at the 41 and hangs on to it. Wayne Davis getting credit for the tackle. And it's first down, Notre Dame. Play was set up very nicely. See Berline play action and it just drops it out there and already his linemen have gotten out in front of him and anytime you can pull your people that quickly and, and Byron's pool got out there in a hurry and set the play up then they just take it down the sideline nicely done Mark Green at the 41 first down for the Irish Berline option at the line he's got Brown got Brown wide open Tim Brown all the way down to the Alabama 27. First down. Chris Good, brother of Terry and Kermit Kendrick were in the neighborhood, but they were giving him too much cushion. Oh, he was looking to the right side. I didn't know if he was going to see Brown over there, but he did look back and he threw it, and he was wide open. They had used the wide receiver Jackson to clear things out, and then you see Brown will just slide back here now. And once he gets back into the zone, He's wide open. Gain of 32 yards on the play. Irish on the Alabama 27. Trailing 14 to nothing. Reggie Ward is in. Brown is out. Notre Dame goes to the wishbone set for the first time. Ride it off to the fullback into the middle. Taylor. And tell you, no, it is Monahan. And from the 27 to the 24. Tom Monahan, a senior from Arcola, Illinois. In a frame. This is where Notre Dame really improved last week against Purdue. When they got down deep, they capitalized and got some points out of it. Remember, in the first couple of games, they were down inside the 20, and both their losses, as a matter of fact, they were down inside the 20 six different times without getting any points. 5.25 to go in the first half. Double tied in, second down and seven. Tied in, uh, moved. And at the top of the picture, Andy Heck moved and got a flag from the linesman. Berline, of course, is protesting that his tight end is entitled to move. So let's see what the call is here for a moment. It is procedure against the Irish. While the Alabama people decide on it, let's check in with Al. Oh, well, Keith, it's absolutely horrifying in terms of heat down here. You can actually feel it come through the turf, and a minute ago it was 126. The sun went in, and now it's 120. But ABC Sports has taken care of me. They've given me my very own swimming pool down here, and I've got some local help filling it up. We'll put the chlorine in, and we'll see how that feels a little bit later. Boy, we can use it, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, the red elephant now having a time, huh? Ball comes back to the 29, where it is second down and 12. Chuck Lanza leads him over the ball with Milt Jackson back in, along with Tim Brown. Monahan, the lone remaining back. Crowd getting into it as Berline drops the pass. Bennett looping around, couldn't get to him, and the pass is dropped by Tim Brown. 
This is really frustrating for Notre Dame. They're killing themselves. They got down deep. They had a nice drive going. They set it up with a nice pass to Brown, and then they come back. The tight end moves. Well, Berline says he's entitled to. He cannot be moving when the snap is taking place. That's illegal procedure. So that's five yards. Then they throw the ball to Brown here. He drops it, and it brings up third and a taxi ride for a first. At 4.49 to go in the first half. Mark Green comes out as a wide receiver, leaving Monaghan the lone back. Irish now with three wide people. And again, that student section down in that corner of the end zone gets into it. Burline passes away, and the mix-up as Milk Jackson turned in. Burline threw out, and the pass is incomplete, and it's fourth down. Well, I tell you what, that was a great play by Philip Brown. We talked about him earlier. He was coming from the backside, number 89. And he didn't get the sack, but he got a hurry, okay, which was just as good as the sack because Berlon had to unload the ball. He did it before the cut, and the pass wasn't even close. And John Carney will come in now and kick into a slight breeze on a 46-yard field goal try. And Sorensen will hold it at the 36. On its way. No good. Wide left. You could see the wind take over the ball and just sort of knock it down and knock it left a little bit as John had the hook on it. And you got an Alabama player shaking up as time is out with 439 to play in the first half. In the final minute at Columbia, South Carolina's Gamecocks drove as far as the Nebraska 19 yard line where Brian Siegler of the Cornhuskers picked off an interception which has apparently sealed a hair-raising 27-24 victory for Nebraska. Still 31 seconds remaining, but the Huskers have the ball and are apparently home free. Keith? Well, you never know when you travel halfway across the country. And I imagine it's pretty doggone hot up in Columbia, South Carolina. It's just been sizzling all across the southeast for over a week. First down for Alabama now from their own 29-yard line, leading 14 to nothing. And Shula pitches to Humphrey, and he'll get to the 30 for a yard. We've had two big plays for the Alabama scores, 66-yard touchdown uh, run by Greg Richardson on a punt return. And then you had the 51-yard play, Al Bell catching a Mike Shula pass. Four minutes to go in the first half. Second down and nine. Shula back to throw. Gets his pass away to the sidelines. But fell a good play by Brandy Wells. Flying across to the sidelines to slap it away with his left hand. Outstanding play by Wells. That Nebraska-South Carolina score is now final. Nebraska winning at 27 to 24. Just watch Wells. Wells is to the right of your screen. Here comes the pass to Bell. He has to lay out completely and bat it away. That's great hand-eye coordination. It's also tremendous body control to stay off Bell. Surely did telegraph the pass, however. And it's third down and about nine. Shula, sack, fumbled the ball. Notre Dame has it. Alabama, 11. Daryl Gordon knocks the ball loose for the Irish. I Mike thought it Shula. was Matt Karras who covered it, though, Tim. Mike Shula had no chance, though, Keith. He didn't see the pressure coming, and he certainly couldn't feel it. Let's take a look at that play again. Shula's looking downfield, and he had a man open across the middle. It was his tight end. Watch Shula now. See, he's looking downfield. He has no clue that they're coming from behind. Oh, that's a good penetration and a good play by Daryl Gordon. The ball was loose, and they got on it quickly. Hey, Robert Franks has got it. Defensive tackle, and the Irish with a golden opportunity now, trying to cash it in as Tim Brown carries from the 11 to the 9. Two yards. It is paramount that Notre Dame capitalizes on this turnover. 
if they have any chance to stay in the ball game. 14 points down, it's just getting hotter. The crowd is loud. Everything's against them. They haven't won on the road in seven games. It's Burline, Taylor, and Johnson in the backfield now for the Irish. Obviously, Tim Brown could be anywhere, either at the tailback or at a wide receiver. He lines up now out of the wishbone. Double tight end. And Burline fakes it. Rolls it out, minutes after him, pass away, knocked down in the end zone, almost intercepted. He's lucky it wasn't. Britt Cooper and Greg Gilbert, linebacker and cornerback, both in on the defensive play for Alabama. Cooper number 20. Again, it was tons of pressure coming from Cornelius Bennett. Now watch, here's the play action, and look at 97. Bennett, boy, you can almost feel his breath on your neck. And then here comes Cooper and Gilbert right here. He's lucky that was an interception. Two red shirts back there. He tried to split the two and throw between them. Milt Jackson comes back in at a wide spot for the Irish on third down now from the nine. Third and seven from the nine. Burline throws. Brown. Touchdown. Notre Dame. Irish got a quick snap. Alabama's defensive people were not set. Freddie Robinson was one of those running around looking to be pick up his man, and in the process, Tim Brown dragging across, got lost, and scored easily. Jackson and Joel Williams on the left side. They took all the defenders that way, and then Brown, who lined up over there, came underneath, and nobody was home. He was by himself. Touchdown, Notre Dame. And Carney now for the extra point try at 2.59 to go in the first half. It's good. So we've got ourselves a 14 to 7 ball game. Legion Field in Birmingham. That's a confident builder too. Joel Williams 89, Milt Jackson number 6 lined up on the left side. They went to the left and took all the red shirts. And see Brown crossing your screen, came underneath the linebackers and nobody followed him out there. Nicely done. It was well set up. Here's Brown now. See to your left of the screen, that's where everybody goes. Oh, you know what happened? Looks like Freddie Robinson got cut off, number 21. Dude, he was uh, all the way across on the other he side of the ground and got cut off. That's exactly what happened. Yep. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Michelob Light, who says you can't have it all, and by Radio Shack, the computer experts. Tim Brown, Dallas, Texas, gets the Irish on the scoreboard. And now they'll kick off to Alabama with Bobby Humphrey, the deep man. Two minutes and 59 seconds to go in the first half. John Carney hooks it long and into the end zone, and Humphrey's not going to come with it. He didn't have a real handle on it, so he decided not to risk it. Here's the touchdown again. Freddie Robinson was the guy who was covering Tim Brown. But he got cut off, ran into his own man, got tangled up with the linebackers, and Tim Brown just came free. He was over there looking to find out where Brown went. He couldn't find him. Well, he should have stayed at home. If he'd have stayed at home, he'd have been uh, where he should have been <laughs> because he went running all the way across the field trying to find Brown. In the meantime, Notre Dame got the quick snap, and he was just caught dead. Perkins called him right over to and spoke with him, told him what he was doing wrong, told him how to correct it. All right, Alabama at the 20, first down. 14-7 ball game, and Perry Boo is upended by Mike Kovaleski. Mike was on the ground, but rolled over and got him as he went by. Since the knee injuries to Kerry Good, it looks like he shortened his steps a little bit. He has. I'm not saying he protects the knee as much, but he, he certainly has cut down his stride. More perhaps of a straight-ahead runner now, too, has made that adjustment because he was... He was wild and woolly when he first showed up. Alabama's only run for 28 yards so far in this game, though, as Bobby Humphrey wiggles in there for a couple of more yards out to about the 25, just over the 25. San Diego Chargers and the Seattle Seahawks from the Kingdom in Seattle next Monday on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Seahawks got upended. San Diego Chargers off to a slow start this year. But you never know about Cops and Company. They can roll it up on you. Third down and four. Shula back. Dumps it off. 
This is uh, good. He's got a first down and then some as he gets it out to the 40 yard line. At a minute and 35 to go in the first half. And the clock now will stop at 139 actually as they move the change. Now the nickelback comes in for the Irish. George Streeter. Mike Haywood is playing today too, number one. For the first time in a long time, Mike injured early on. And is just now rounding into form. Good defensive back. From the 40 now, first down, Alabama. Shula's going to stay in the air. Goes to the sidelines for Greg Richardson. Steps out of bounds at the 42. That ought to get a flag, and it does. Richardson is hit way well out of bounds by Troy Wilson and knocked hard into the bench. But the benches here are plastic, and they're quite light and no injury. That is a costly mistake by Troy Wilson. It's just a mental error. I don't know how that could happen. Here's the play again. They sent both wide receivers down long on the outside on a fly pattern. And then he stops and comes back for the football. Now he's out of bounds right there, and here comes the hit. Look at this. He's out of bounds right there. Well, it's close, but he's still a yard out of bounds when he was hit. That is a costly penalty. Up in the deep front. First down. Well, it goes from the 42 to the 27, so it's Alabama now camped on the Notre Dame 27-yard line with a minute and 12 to go, and they're getting within Van Tiffen's range, certainly. Remember that dramatic 52-yarder against Auburn last year? This is Bobby Humphrey running reverse with Al Bell. Bell coming around, two men in front of him. Inside the 20, inside the 15. Gets to the sidelines, out of bounds at about the 12. Mike Kovaleski finally brought him out. He scored on the reverse against Cincinnati last year. He almost broke this one. Watch Bell when he runs. He explodes. Here he comes down, takes the handoff. He becomes jingle joints. You can't read his body movements to tell where he's going. Look at him, and he follows his blocking against Richardson up in front of him, and then finally he's taken down. But he almost took it all the all the way. Make it the 11 of Notre Dame. First down, Alabama. 104 to go, first half. Good and Humphrey now. Split back set. Humphrey in motion. Jula passing. Touchdown, Howard Cross. They call him High C, Howard Cross. He's 6'6", 240. This is only the second time he's caught a pass this year. The tight end, they just sent him straight down the middle. Tried to split the seam in the zone, and he did. Boy, you can't, you don't watch him because he hadn't caught many passes. You don't pay much attention, and that's what happens. Van Tippen, high snap, extra point, good, but again, almost not. Boy, he hooked that thing low and hard. Just barely got it in. He's now at 111 and 59 seconds to go in the first half, and here's Alabama. In the last four Alabama plays, good for 15, Richardson 18-yard reception, a 15-yard penalty, Bell on a 16-yard reverse, and then 11 yards to cross for the touchdown, and it's 21 to 7. Alabama again leading by 14. Two key plays, of course, the penalty. It was not flagrant. He was just, I think, over-aggressive and tried to push him out of bounds, but he was already there. So that is a flag. Good call. Then the touchdown. Howard Cross, only the second catch all year for him. You forget about it. You forget he's there. Well, that's one of the trademarks of Perkins' offense, though. He, he'll lull you into that, like Bell. Keep running Bell around, Bell around, and all of a sudden, bingo. They got him, and, they, and the same on the tight end. The kickoff goes to Tim Brown. And Tim shakes two back there, and it gets it out across the 20, close to the 25. 17 yards. Clock is stopped now at 53 seconds to go in the first half. They go into the hurry-up offense. That means they probably have four plays that they run in this type of situation. 
They have to get out of bounds. They work on this every single practice day at the end of their workout. And they have 53 seconds to go a long, long way. From the 24, just over the 24, both teams with three timeouts. Burline back to throw. They get him. He bounces the ball. Or did he catch it? On one hop. I thought he caught it on one hop, too. But it was Philip Brown and Cornelius Bennett. The two outside linebackers were climbing all over Steve Burline as he was trying to deliver it. See, that's just as good as a sack, maybe even better in this situation because they forced him to hurry. That's not a sack. Give him a baggie. He got it away quickly. Again, it's the speed we talked about at the top of the show, Keith. It's evident. Alabama yep. is far superior in team speed. Andrzejczyk comes in now for Notre Dame at quarterback. Quarterback draw. Terry Andrzejczyk is up across the 30. And down at the 31, three yards short of the first down. And 38 seconds to go, and Notre Dame now will spend one of its three timeouts. Ray Perkins. Blue Hope, matching wits at Legion Field in Birmingham here on ABC. And let's, for a moment, visit Jim Lampley. Right, the American League batting race looks like this. Wade Boggs not playing today. In the first game of a doubleheader at Fenway Park, Don Mattingly went three for five. So Mattingly has now crept to within five points, 352. Boggs holding at 357. One more game to play today for Mattingly. And then presumably with Boggs not playing again tomorrow, the Yankees will finish it up tomorrow in Fenway Park. Meanwhile, Ohio State, after a scoreless second half, has held on to beat or has held on to beat Illinois 14 zip in Columbus, and the Buckeyes pull their record to even uh, on the season. Now let's go back to Keith Jackson. That's a tough decision, and Wade Boggs. Uh, you can't even, I don't think think of going into the playoffs against California and the playoffs American League start next Tuesday here on ABC. The National League will start the next Wednesday. Al Michaels and Jim Palmer with the Americans. Uh, Tim McCarver now get together over in Houston. But you've got to have Boggs going into the playoffs and yet you want the man to have a chance to win the batting championship too. But you've got to cure that hamstring if you can. I'm sure he wants that title too. Could I'm be sure financially rewarding for him. I'm sure there's a clause in there incentive. It is third down now, and they need close to four yards. Burline throws the ball over Bennett to Mark Green. Green gets away down the sidelines for an Irish first down. It's Andrzejczyk, not Burline. And you've got 32 seconds remaining as the clock is stopped on the out-of-bounds play. It's interesting that uh, Lou Holtz has decided to alternate his quarterbacks on possessions today. I think it's also interesting the way Perkins is using his linebackers. That was Holloman that made that tackle. And he is, if I'm not mistaken, the eighth linebacker thus far they've had in the first half. The day as hot as this, you're going to use as many people as you can. Keep them fresh. Fatigue is oftentimes responsible for injuries. Anthony Johnson lines up in the eye back position for Notre Dame now. Andrew Zach fakes to him. Deep drop. Pass is thrown up, trying to set up a screenplay. For Johnson, but it was too slow to develop and too much pressure, and Andrew Zach had to throw a wounded balloon up there, and it just didn't work. Willie Wyatt was the guy applying the pressure, and boy, when Alabama starts coming toward you, they come in a hurry. They close on you. They do have that straight line attitude, don't they? Well, you know, they, they come at you. They're in a bad mood when they get there. And all their linebackers run 4 4 4 5. Second down and 10 for the Irish up on the 41. Andrew Zach slips. He's got some room now, and he's got Brown over there, and Brown has the ball for a first down at the Alabama 34 in front of Britton Cooper. So Andrew Zach's foot speed figures in that play, his agility. Alabama was bringing six men on the pass rush. They loosened up. They only had two deep in the zone. And it's just, look at this. It's a two guys down deep. They just run a cross pattern. Tim Brown goes outside. Now he's wide open. The pass was right there. It was well thrown under a lot of pressure. Still 18 seconds left. You're in Carney's range right now. But they have really a chance for two more offensive plays here. On the Alabama 
34 on first down. Andrew Zach gets good protection this time. Goes underneath to Joel Williams, the tight end, and he's got eight yards. They stop the clock again with another timeout and only 10 seconds remaining in the first half. The Irish have one timeout remaining. So they, they actually can go with one more play, and obviously uh, you would think they throw it in the end zone. Call a time and still have time, I think, probably to get Carney into the ball game for a field goal try. Well, you only have that one timeout left. Right. Uh, if you take a play, there's a gamble there that the clock could run out. You do want to come away from with points here. Trailing 21 to 7, it's paramount that you get on the board with at least three. But it appears their intent is to go ahead and run one more play. And if you're going to do that, one would think you would probably throw it into the end zone. 21 to 7, Alabama leading. Another thing to tuck away in your mind as you lean back for your halftime respite here is Alabama has been a second half ball club. 21 points here in the first half is one of their biggest points production of any first half they have had this season. This has to be a quick developing play. They can't toy around. They've got to get it to the sideline or the end zone. It is second down and three from the Alabama 26. Braxton Banks is in the backfield. If you got a gimmick play, this might be the place. Pressure from the backside. Andrew Zach steps away from it, throws for Mill Jackson. He's inside the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the five. With three seconds left. Now you've got to go for the three here. Or we'll Lou Boer's neck and decide I'm going to stick at the end zone. No, he's nope, sending Carney's yeah. coming. So it works well as they send Jackson on a crossing pattern. And Milt does a good job with it, getting it down just inside the five. John Carney is out with the tee, puts it down on the 12 at the 22-yard field goal drive. He missed earlier from 46, wide left. Sorensen holds. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is high and good. And time has run out. So after the first half of play, Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama 21, and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame 10. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Hayes Microcomputer Products Incorporated. Say yes to the future with Hayes. And by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. We're back in Birmingham. Let's take a quick look at some of the highlights out of the first half, and there were many in a 21-10 Alabama lead. Alabama on the board first with this play, a punt returned by Greg Richardson of 66 yards. Keith Richardson steps up. You'll see him right here now. He gains five yards up and goes under the containment, and once he gets outside, they have a wall set up. Now, he missed spring ball to compete in track, competed in the SEC championships in the 200-meter and 400-meter relay. He has 9-3 speed, tremendous return artist. Alabama made it 14 to nothing on this play. Mike Shula to Al Bell. Bell is the big play specialist. He averages almost 10 yards a catch, as a matter of fact, and this does bear repeating. Last year, he came up with 36 first downs or touchdowns out of 41 passes. Mike Brown, or rather Tim Brown here, will get lost by in the Alabama secondary, come drifting across the middle and go in untouched for the Irish score. Richardson, the defensive back, just got tied up with the secondary and couldn't follow him across the middle. That made it 14-7, but this play, Shula to cross, makes it 21-7 Alabama. See, now this is the guy you forget about, the tight end. They've only thrown him one pass all year. This one's a touchdown. And John Carney kicked a 22-yard field goal, and that's where we are. We're ready to go with the second half, 21-10 Alabama. And uh, the tide will be kicking off to Notre Dame and Tim Brown. Tiffin hits it high to the goal line for Brown. Bumble. Alabama's got it. Second effort on the 20-yard line. It's a turnover, and Alabama jumps on the ball at the Notre Dame 18. Desmond Holloman.
nothing fancy about it. He came up, took it on the right side. So many times, extra effort gets you into trouble because then you're relaxing, trying to get the leg drive. The arms relaxed, the ball came loose, and it's Alabama's ball. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go for the six right away. Make it the 19 to go today. First down. They come out with Good and Humphrey behind Mike Shula. Richardson and Bell wide. Go to Humphrey. Up the middle he goes. Penalty flags flying all over the field as he goes to the 10. Flags were thrown in the area where they usually call holding, offensive holding. It is. We told you that Notre Dame is tied for the lead in every statistical area or does lead, including penalties. One of those penalties was critical in the last touchdown before the half ended for Alabama. Personal foul. The rest of it, as we said, was Richardson on the long play and then the two touchdown passes. Mike Shula, 6 for 11, two touchdowns, 107 yards. That is the first Alabama penalty of the ball game, too, as the ball comes back now to the 29-yard line. And so it is first down and 20 for the time. Shula on first and 20, wants to throw it. Pass is underthrown, but it's a sliding, diving catch by Al Bell. Good at about the 22-yard line, a pickup of seven yards on the play. Watch Bell. He drives off the line so quickly, you have to respect his speed. So now you move off. You can't even see the defensive back in the picture. That's how soft he's playing. That's how much room he's given Bell. And then Bell drives back toward the Alabama line of scrimmage to make contact with the ball. And he takes it right off the turf. Good catch. Second down at about uh, 13. From the 22, Shula that looks to throw. Gets it away, and it's out of bounds incomplete. He had Howard cross his tight end all alone down the middle of the field. Once uh, they had, the linebacker made the contact with Cross, he lost him. I'll tell you exactly what happens, though. Shula now, you'll see him. He does a pump. This is a pump and go. It's designed for Bell all the way. There it is. All right, now he reads load, reloads. Bell is going for the end zone. All right, now you can see the tight end right there. It's wide open. At least he's got a couple yards on the, the linebacker. But this was for Bell right away. It was a hitch and go. And then Shula just threw it away. That wasn't incomplete. He threw it out there purposely to get it out of bounds and throw it away. He is a heady quarterback. Brings up third down and 13. Just starting the second half of play. 21-10, Alabama. Timeout called. Uh, Mike looking around did not like what he had, didn't like the people he had, didn't like the play was called. So he spends a timeout to talk about it. Legion Phil field is filled today, as you would expect, for this ball game, one of the premier matchups of this entire season. Right now, Alabama leading 21 to 10. They're looking at third down and 13 at the Notre Dame 22, trying to cash in the turnover by Tim Brown. They send Bell and Richardson now to the bottom of the picture and put Humphrey in motion to the boundary side. Shula's pass for touchdown. Bell. Touchdown. quick feet he does not possess a test of early type arm but he is terrific in the reading defenses as well as anybody and albert bell he's quicker than gossip that was a post pattern just took it straight down the middle watch this drives him off again with that explosion now cuts back into the post and he's wide open third touchdown pass as van tippen comes in he's got 112 extra points in a row and the alabama place kickers over the year now have 171 in a row Jim Lampley in New York. Auburn, seventh rated, beats Western Carolina 55 to 6. Two Auburn touchdowns scored by defensive tackles. So this will be the happiest night of the year for Nate Hill and Malcolm McCary. Meanwhile, Stanford has gone in front of San Diego State 7 to 3 on a touchdown pass from John Pay to Tom Henley. Keith? 
Stanford Cardinal trying to get off one of their best starts in years and years. Like they might. San Diego State, Todd Santos, no good passing quarterback. That ball is hooked toward the corner and deep into the end zone and will not be returned. It'll come out to the 20-yard line where the Fighting Irish will have it first down. Shula's ni last nine passes, seven out of nine, 130 yards and three touchdowns. The yardage total is not uh, terribly imposing, but what it has produced is. And there are his overall stats for the ball game. Shula, the left-hander, he and his coach, you know, they believe they've got a legitimate shot at the national championship. Certainly the SEC title is one of their goals, but they'll be disappointed if they don't win it all this year. Pete Burline opens the quarterback with Mark Green and Cornell Taylor in the backfield behind him. Brown and Miller are the wide people. And the crowd immediately gets into it. They take it inside with Taylor. He bounces off the stack and gets the football out to the 30 before Cornelius Bennett brings him down. This is a critical drive, Keith. I think Notre Dame has to come back and score or they can kiss it goodbye this afternoon. Taylor that time with a good second effort as he bounced off that stack and got outside for the first down, giving the Irish a little breathing room. 13.20 to go, third quarter. They go back to Taylor, and the well was dry that time. He gets a yard, that's all. Cole made the tackle. Maybe one yard. Second down and nine. Burline losing the handle. Fighting his way to the bottom and covering the ball. They have to pick up the pace. They've got to start doing some things. They've got to use some motion to run some of those linebackers out of the middle and position the defense the way they want it. Now here in the middle of the series, Andrzejczyk comes back into the ball game and Burline comes out. Doesn't seem terribly pleased about it. Number two. Third and ten from the 30. Andrew Zach, minutes after him, minutes got a hold of him. Penalty flag is thrown. The referee is right back there with him. I think one of the linesmen may have thrown that flag thinking that Bennett had a face mask. But uh, Alabama is now applauding the flag, so apparently it will have something to do with, with John Askin. I think number 72 was involved a bit. Yeah. Well, the, the ball was breakers. thrown that way, and it was thrown to Askin. Yep. I don't know. He didn't catch it, though, so I don't understand. Uh, we'll, have to well the penalty flag was thrown before the ball was thrown, actually. Cornell Taylor was in the, the neighborhood, so there are two it was fouls. the receiver. Yeah, I thought so. Two fouls. We have illegal touching of the pass on the offense yep. by an ineligible receiver. John Askin. Askin. We also have face mask yeah, Bennett got on the defense. We have a retry. So Cornelius Bennett did get a hold of the face mask. Look number like it, but I number 97, sure. that's Bennett. Now watch him come in. He says his favorite tackle is to come from an angle and take somebody by the neck and whip him down. He said he loves the clothesline. You saw his hand on the face mask. He did get it off. He was incidental, wasn't flagrant. But you'll see right here, his left hand grabs the face mask of Andrzejczyk and slides right off. Didn't slide off that quickly, though. <laughs> no, he didn't. That got the first flag, and then came uh, the second flag with the ball bouncing off John Askin. And so they'll replay it. That's third down and ten. Well, I tell you what, Bosworth has gotten a lot of publicity, but I'd take Cornelius Bennett up against anybody in the country. Not bad. 28 to 10, Alabama leading. Notre Dame trying to untrack it here in the third quarter as Andrew Zach goes back to throw, runs away from Bennett, and takes off. He got his first down as he runs the ball out to the 47 yard line, and Philip Brown finally bulldog him up there. Andrew Zach's running ability for the second time in the game pays off. He's got quick feet. You can see he's got good stride. Now, watch it. He's, he's got good vision. He's watching his blockers. He's cutting in and out. Almost lost the football and then tucked it away just before he hit the ground. First down, Notre Dame at their own 47. 
Time remaining third quarter is 11.25. Bennett drifts into an inside position and comes firing up the middle. Hits the quarterback just as he pitches. Mark Green is knocked down short of the 45 by Greg Gilbert. Again, watch number 97, what he does on this play. Greg Gilbert is also shaken up on the play right now. He's down for a moment as he went down underneath the players. So Greg is uh, banged up, holding his head right now. Looks like his eye, Keith. Might've it looks like he might have gotten poked in the eye or something. The eye, yeah. but you know, Bennett that time went to an inside backer position and then fired right up the middle and had his arms around the quarterback when he pitched. It's what we talked about prior to the game. They are moving him. They're flip-flopping him from side to side. They're moving him to the middle. That time he just came through. You know what? The week off, I think, really helped Alabama not only get ready for the people that were banged up and get them healthy again, but it also helped them prepare for all these formations. It's not that Alabama, I mean, it's not that Notre Dame does so many things and so runs so many plays, but they do it under so many disguises and out of so many formations. Now here's Al. Keith, you know they call this great group of kids down here the Alabama Million Dollar Band. Well, let's just see if they live up to their word. Who's got money? Let's have it. Let's have it. Got a buck? Got a buck? Okay. We got a little bit to go, but we're off to a good start. Keith, in all ways, these guys live up to their name. Maestro? Woo! Scott Calhoun is one of the first ladies to be a director of bands in the country. Of course, she works. <laughs> they pay their dues, those kids. They've put on a marvelous show at halftime and prior to the game. All right, Greg Gilbert's up now and trotting off the field. He's all right. Cornelius and Bennett, uh, Keith says that he admires Lawrence Taylor of the Giants. He plays like Lawrence Taylor. It looks like him a little bit, the way he, uh, he runs to the football. Ball is short of the 45 now. Loss on that play. Make it second down and almost 13 for Notre Dame. Andrew Zack trying to hand it off inside. Uh, incomplete. Did he, he pitched the ball just enough to make it an incomplete forward pass. That was almost a handle. But that's the beauty of that <laughs> shuffle pass. The shuffle pass is run blocking, sure, but it is still a forward pass, and if he drops it, it's not a fumble. It's an incomplete pass. Third down and close to 13 now. Reggie Ward is in. Brown is out. Furline to throw. Gets away from Jarvis. Oh! Cornelius Bennett. Knocked the ball loose, but his hand was going forward. It is an incomplete forward pass. Bennett traveled about 30 yards that time to get his hands on the quarterback. He is phenomenal. He told me yesterday he's still not in playing shape because he's recovered from hamstring pull. But, you know, Andrews Act thinks he's away from everybody. And Bennett just never quits. He keeps coming. The ball was coming forward. It is an incomplete pass, but he went at least 30 yards to get there. Dan Sorensen in the punt now on fourth down. Three punts today, 39, 39, 48. Hitting it into a slight breeze. Gets a good spin on it, though. Greg Richardson at the 10. And caught from behind uh, by Mike Kovaleski, who is all over the field himself today. 45-yard punt into the wind by Sorensen. And Alabama will start from its 17. Make it 18. Keith, I can't, I can't help but think that Notre Dame has to force a turnover here and they're gonna it's gonna be over. Well, many of you will see West Virginia's Mountaineers against top-rated Miami next week, and you're going to see a team whose pride was stung for the third time today as they lost in Blacksburg, Virginia, to Virginia Tech. The Hokies with a goal line stand stopped West Virginia on first and goal at the Hokie 6 with seven minutes to go. And then, in front of the Virginia Tech University officials whom he has sued for $3.5 million, the players carried Bill Dooley of Virginia Tech off the field. Keith? I imagine that Bill felt pretty good about that, didn't he? 
Wait a minute. <laughs> what is this? Say yes. Let's get on with the game. Here comes uh, Shula now. First down at the 18-yard line. Up the middle goes Bo Wright. And Bo Wright, a 215-pound junior from Pritchard, carrying the ball for the first time in the game. I think he's carried it. He, he was in previously, but did not carry the ball. And he blew out of there at that time for 15 yards just past. Uh, no, make it... Uh, 11 yards for a first down. Notre Dame was in the right defense. Brandy Wells was right there. He just didn't make the tackle. Alabama probably would like to just sit on that ground now and uh, grind it out if they can and kill off some of this clock, leading 28 to 10 with 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Shula, very slow play. Everything was messed up, but nothing was timed right that time. And the whistles and flags will stop it. Procedure call against the tide. Along the front, Alabama's been substituting uh, some, but not as liberally as perhaps they would like on a hot day like this. It's Jeff Bentley, Andy Anderson, Mike Zuga, Terrell Chapman, and Danny Cash at second unit line. And they're not a day at the beach either. They weigh in at 280, 275, 240, and 240. So they're all big, and that second unit is very, very young. I couldn't believe it yesterday when I saw Joe King. He's 298 pounds, and he had a fat check. You know where they weigh in water and determine how much body fat you have for your ideal weight? He's right at his ideal weight. No body fat at all. It's all muscle. <laughs> all right, Humphrey goes in motion. Looks like they've called the same play on first and 15. Up the middle goes Bull right again. And Bull moves it from the 23 to the 30 for a pickup of seven yards. Keith, West Alabama, Pitcher. Alabama has not played badly today, especially on defense. They have allowed only 98 yards rushing for Alabama. Notre Dame so, I mean, Notre Dame has not played that badly on defense. Bell and Greg Payne now come wide on this play. Bell is the inside man. Shula pitches the ball back to Bobby Humphrey. Humphrey has to turn it back inside because the lane outside was fully closed and Mike Griffin is waiting for him there and puts him on the ground at the 31-yard line. Let's update the heat factor on the field now with Al. Well, Keith, it's a happy report. The sun is dipping in the Birmingham sky right now. We've got a nice breeze blowing across the field. It's so much cooler than the first half, even though a check of the field level thermometer just revealed a 100-degree reading. It feels about 85 or 90 or so. Very, very comfortable. Right. That's good news because fatigue sets in in that fourth quarter with the kind of heat we had early on in the day. Third down and seven. Shula pitches it outside to Humphrey. Got him out there one-on-one, -on -one, but that's a very good open field tackle by Troy Wilson to stop him short of the first down. So in comes the punting team for the tie. Troy Wilson has gotten better every week. He's playing more aggressively. The open field tackle, he stays up high and doesn't take the leg fakes, the limp legs that the running backs give him. Chris Moore to punt. Got most of that one, didn't he? Knocks it all the way back to the 15-yard line where Troy Wilson gets a block on the corner and comes back to the 35. 49-yard punt by Chris Moore. 7.28 to go in the third quarter. Starting Tuesday night here on ABC, the American League playoff. The best of seven matching the California Angels and the Boston Red Sox. And then on Wednesday night here on ABC, the National League will start from Houston as the Astros host the New York Mets. Play two in Houston, move on to New York in the National League. They start on the east side in the American League playoff. First down, Andrzejczyk gives the ball away to Hiawatha Francisco, who has finally gained reasonable health and is back in uniform. And his first carry since coming back from extended injury is not particularly effective. He lost a yard and a half. Iowatha, Nahomia, Nokomis, Francisco. That's 31 letters, 17 consonants, and 14 vowels. And he's had one bad knee, and that has kept him slowed down a little bit. But he's back now. 
And he is the 10th Irish back to carry the ball today. Andrzak hands it inside. And the inside game, which was reasonably available earlier to Notre Dame, seemingly has been shut down now by Alabama. Monaghan tried that time and just got nothing out of it to speak of. He got about a yard. So the Irish are looking at third and nine. And back comes Bennett. Bennett out the first two plays to take a breather. Philip Brown leaves the field and Cornelius is back. time called here by the Irish. So each team has spent a time out here in the third quarter since 19 to go and Alabama leading by 18. You know the Pac-10 is kind of a crazy league. UCLA has won three championships in the last four years but today for the fifth straight year they began their conference schedule without winning. Arizona State has its first victory ever over the Bruins a 16 to 9 win in the Rose Bowl the only touchdown in the game, a Jeff Van Rapphorst to Bruce Smith pass. That ended just moments ago, Keith. Both of those Arizona schools, I think, got pretty good football teams this year. All right, it's third down and long, third and nine. And Burline is back in at quarterback for Notre Dame out of the shotgun. Rob getting into it here, making as much noise as possible as Burline loads up. Intercepted! And picked off by Freddie Robinson. Furline had very good protection for a long time. Then time ran out as he threw, tried to force the ball. Again, it was excellent pressure by the defensive line. Forced him to hurry up. He threw the out pattern. That had to, was picked off against Michigan State. Returned for a touchdown. Again, Freddie Robinson just reads Reggie Ward. Now here comes the ball. Now you'll see him react immediately. And he steps in front, makes the interception. Third Notre Dame turnover. Fourth down was coming up and the Irish trying to deliver a third and long trying to force the pass it didn't work here's the reverse the other way second time Bell has run the play today and he's loose and Al Bell carries the football inside the Notre Dame 15 yard line before Mike Haywood finally got in Bell ran a reverse to the left side for the second quarter in the third quarter he goes the other way with it Watch him now. He went in motion again. Same type thing. Brought the linebackers over that side. And Shula throws the block to the left of your screen. Takes down two players. Now Bell is directing traffic. Oh, he's fast. Six feet, 170 pound, All-American. Tough body, soft hands, great instincts. And it's first down Alabama at the Irish 14-yard line. Again, trying to cash in a turnover. Shula now goes back under center. He started to call timeout, then he went back under center, realizing he'd already spent one timeout here and he didn't want to spend another, so he stepped back in there and ran the play anyway. Robert Banks is a little slow to get up, and you got a penalty flag. Ray Perkins puts his hands in the air. He says, what's going on out there? Let's get together. It's against Alabama. Wants to talk to the official. Ray Perkins wants to find out what's taking place down there. On the offense, still first down. 25 second clock ran out on him. Shula started to walk away from center and then went back under center and called the play. Just didn't want to spend that second time out. But the ball is now back at the 19. And on first and 15, they give it to Bobby Humphrey and again whistles have stopped him. We played that first half in a hurry, but the third quarters turned out to be pretty long as Alabama now gets Sting with a procedure call. Set ball, ball start on the offense, still first down. 
hot day you get a little tired and concentration becomes a factor and your top 10 scores of the day almost a shocker in there but Nebraska came on late to win over South Carolina it's first and 20 now for Alabama Balls back to the 24 Shula shovels it ahead to Bo Wright and Bo Wright gets to the 21 where Mike Griffin greets him senior from Cleveland Heights Ohio Shula drops. Bell's over on the side. Has the ball. One man to beat. Can't go. That is a very good open field tackle by Brandy Wells. I'll tell you right now, trying to bring Al Bell down in the open fields like trying to coil a cold hose on a December morning. <laughs> you just can't get a hold of it. Oh, a cold hose on a December morning. <laughs> Gain is down to the 12-yard line. You're right about Bell, though. He has those uh, fast switch muscle fibers we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. But again, you stay high and you read him. He got down around his ankles, though, and held on. On third down and eight. They send Humphrey to the boundary, and Schuler drops. Shovels the ball ahead, and the ball is rolling around loose. It's an incomplete forward pass, and in comes Van Tiffin, the place kicker for Alabama. Van Tiffin with 112 consecutive extra points. He holds just virtually every Alabama record involving the foot and the football, including he, seven of the longest field goals in the school's history. You know, he never practices extra points in practice. He says kicking an extra point is nothing. It's like a layup in basketball. So why bother with it? Go back and get the important stuff. Well, he's just barely skinned two through today. This is a 29-yard field goal drive. Well, how do you do? He was six out of six on the season. Now he is six out of seven. And for a moment at least, probably reality will set in. It looked like the stamp was all right. It looked like the hold was all right. But he just hooked it out of there. Here's Van Tiffin. Now, the last time Alabama missed an extra point was September of 1981, and he doesn't miss many field goals either. This one, though, he watched it, he was concerned, and he knew it was off as soon as it left his foot. He's as good as they come, though, Van Tiffin. We saw him hit that 52-yarder to win the game against Auburn with no time on the clock last year. And Rizak is the quarterback for the Irish now as they take over at their own 20, trailing 28 to 10. And Andrzejczyk dumps the ball off outside to Mark Green, ducks under a couple of Alabama tacklers, and gets a couple of yards on the play. He was in posture of losing as many as five yards, but comes up limping after being hit. That was Cornelius Bennett who missed him. You don't see that very often. Cornelius Bennett, they call him Biscuit. Well, you get a little infatuated with that clotheslining uh, business or tackling the upper body, and sometimes you'll get burned doing it when somebody steps underneath you. Second down and eight. Andrew Zach optioned off to his pullback. Now he's got a peck of trouble. Throws an incomplete pass up the field. Anthony Johnson out of the backfield was the only eligible receiver he could find. Derek Slaughter, number 65, had Andrew Zach in his sights. And Terry, rather than uh, risk a sack and a 15-yard loss, dumping the ball up the complete. Now Anthony Johnson comes wide to the bottom of the picture on third and long. Andrew Zach, a little quick pop to Johnson. Johnson is taken down immediately by, uh, by uh, Freddie Robinson and uh, 
it's called an incomplete forward pass. He didn't hold on as he went down. I can't remember the last time I saw a cornerback read anything as quickly as he did. I mean, as soon as Andrew Zach even looked at that side, Robinson made his break and came up and was on Johnson's back the same time the ball got there. Sorensen is in the punt now. His last one was a good one, 45 yards. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Pretty good kick by Sorensen inside the 40, 38 Richardson. They overrun him a little bit, but the following troops get him and put him down at 38. And let's meet the super fan now with L. Keith, his name is Sandy Leeds. He's from Yonkers, New York. It's amazing he comes to every single Alabama game home on the road. That's a long commute. You've been dubbed the super fan. That's quite an honor. Yes, it certainly is. I'm a little hoarse because I'm sort of happy today. I've been doing some yelling. Now, Sandy's also been named an honorary Southerner by the folks down here. Say something with that kind of an accent for me. I'm glad to be talking to you all. <laughs> very good, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. Have a safe trip back home. Thank you very much. Back to you, Keith. <laughs> We're going to have to send him to school. They all come back now, yeah? <laughs> Here's the pitch to Humphrey. Cuts it back against the grain, finds daylight. And crosses midfield and picks up the first down at the Notre Dame 48-yard line. Humphrey is the team's leading rusher. They give it to him about 15 times a game. He averages over five yards per carry, and that's reliability. Tremendous instincts as a runner. He's got that good vision we talk about. Truly a gifted athlete. The sprinter speed, and last year he became the first freshman ever at Alabama to go over 100 yards rushing two consecutive games. Inside, Bo Wright working with the ball. He just kept on wiggling around and people kept sliding off of him and he gets inside the 40 to about the 39 and he gained nine yards on that carry. Minute and 40 now to go in the third quarter and Alabama is in control of the ball game right now. They are dominating, the, they are dictating the tempo. Shula outside, Bell set up the screen for him, gets one block, and gets down just short of the 30, where James Bob, a senior from Port Arthur, Texas, got him. If he had, if Bell had been able to get past Bob, he might still be going. Well, that Alabama offense is set up that way to get Jelks and Humphrey and Bell, and even Richardson, get them one-on-one -on -one as often as they can to let them utilize that tremendous speed and that running ability. That flanker screen that time put a blocker in front of him, and it was fairly... Well, it was a great defensive play to take him down for one thing. Clay Whitehurst, the wide receiver out there with him, did his job, too. He took his man down. First down. Shula's pass. Intercepted. Bad pass. Overthrown. Intended for Humphrey. Picked off by Mike Haywood. Haywood with a big return. He's finally run down from behind at the 40-yard line. <laughs> Mike had some pressure on the play, but it, uh, it was kind of a wounded goose he threw up there, wasn't it? It looks like he was trying to get it up to high C, as tall, tight end. No, it wasn't either. No, nope. It was Humphrey out there, and he just overthrew him, threw behind him and over him. Haywood, with a good return, gives Notre Dame good field position at the 40. Look at Richardson, seconds. Richardson coming up behind him. Oh, almost took his head off. Zach stays in there at quarterback with Johnson and Taylor behind him. Tim Brown is the wide man to the bottom of the picture, and Andrew Zach coming down on the option, goes outside to Johnson, gets a good block from Tim Brown, and crosses midfield and fights his way on down to about the Alabama 46. Telling you, we're going to hear a lot from him before his play and career is done. Probably as a fullback. Ricky Thomas made the tackle. Notre Dame is not exactly loaded right now with running backs. Clock running at 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Andrew Zach on the option, uh, runs back the other way and turns, uh, and oh, fumbles the football and a scramble on it. And Notre Dame keeps it. Oh, Andrew Zach fighting for what he could get out of it, seemingly was going to go down behind the line of scrimmage. But he takes the ball to the 38 and recovers it, apparently. 
Watch him, Keith. He looks like, here's the play action now. He's looking at the left side, trying to get that little loop screen back to Johnson. But instead, he tucks it away now. Now, here comes Joe Goodwin. Watch him, number 90. Was it 90 that stripped him? No, 90 came oh, over the top down. It was Randy Rockwell, Rockwell that stripped the ball away from him. The third quarter is over with Alabama leading. 28 to 10 over Notre Dame. Game. Alabama leads 28 to 10. Notre Dame owns the football. Second down and three at the Alabama 38-yard line. Steve Burline in at quarterback. In trouble. Turns his helmet and shoulders upfield, though, lunging for his first down. And they're going to call him down, even though uh, Slaughter comes out of the stack with the ball. He's going to have a first down very close to the Alabama 35. And I'll re-emphasize uh, the old theme that's been around here now for two weeks. As you see the third quarter stats, Alabama has never beaten Notre Dame. Well, three things the Crimson Tide have never been able to do. Beat Notre Dame, win a Heisman Trophy, and beat Texas. Hard to believe there's never been a Heisman Trophy winner at the University of Alabama. I guess Joe Namath came about as close as you could come. On first down, Burline pumps it. He's got Brown, goes the other way, and throws it out of bounds as Jackson shortened up his route. And Brown was wide open, going down the middle. Looked like Burline was a little bit confused as to the route. I thought he, he looked up and looked as if he thought the receiver was going to do it down and up. There's Tim Brown. Tim Brown just did the square out and stayed. Miller still hasn't seen the ball today. Number 17, wide receiver at the top of the picture. Burline options. Comes back to Brown. Brown is tripped up by number 57, Randy Rockwell. Randy is only 200 pounds, but he plays that linebacking position with ferocity. Ball is at the 31. Third down and just about five yards. Straight back. Well, I don't know what that was either. I guess the ball just simply took off and flew away from him because Brown was the only man in the neighborhood and was four feet over his head. Burline has a total look of frustration right now. It's five out of 15 on the day. Fourth down and five for Notre Dame at the Alabama 31. Minutes after. Pass is overthrown, intended for Anthony Johnson, and Burline is turned upside down by Cornelius Bennett just as he threw the ball. Boy, Cornelius Bennett just does not quit. Old Biscuit. They call him Biscuit. They said in the fourth grade he kept eating a lot of biscuits and just sat at the cafeteria forever. But I'm telling you, he just never stopped running. Watch 97 now. Here he comes. See him in the middle of your screen, 97? Goes up once, then chases him back the other way. Has a hand on him, and finally, Burline just throws it out of bounds. 13-22 to go. Alabama takes over the football. First down at its own 31, leading by 18. Pressure now shifts onto the Irish defensive unit as Alabama comes up owning the ball at an 18-point lead and time ticking away against them. Shula pitches outside to Humphrey. Humphrey trying to get around the corner. Can't do it. Brought down by George Streeter. Strong safety. Good play by George. Let's go to the best seat in the house now with Al. Oh, Keith, it's a beauty this week. Not only does it have my name on it, but it's uh, got some special features that belongs to my pal here, Al. It's got a full sound system. It's got uh, a shower. And now the best part, it moves forever. I want it to. Right to any line of scrimmage anywhere on the field. Thank you, Al. 
Penalty flags are flying as the ball is snapped, and we may have that movement again. Game has gotten a bit ragged. Really has the second half. We've seen a lot of flags and just a couple of penalties in the first half. It's like flag day out here now. I think that's fatigue. Hot weather, a little tired. You spent all of your adrenaline surely in the first half, and now you're just you gotta reach down and get whatever's left. Sometimes it affects you. Well, the thing about the heat is that it's accompanied by humidity, and the best condition athlete has to feel that. It's draining. All right, second down and 20 now as the ball comes back. Hand it off to Bobby Humphrey. And Humphrey gets from the 24 up to about the 26. They've got to go up to the 41 for their first down. So it was actually about sec uh, first and 18. Look at that, Indiana. Losers. Off to a big start, 1986. Arkansas came back and won big. Pretty good team. Third down and about 15 now. Shovel pass to Bo Wright, gets a block on the corner, gets one from Humphrey, turns it up to the 36, and there he is gang tackled. Bo Wright. Bo Wright is thick. 5'11", 5, 5, 215 pounds, has a low center of gravity. Was an inside linebacker last year, now he's a running back. Kicking team is on now for Alabama. So Notre Dame's defensive unit does its job. They pin him up and hold him and force the punt. 11-20 to go in the game. Troy Wilson and No Jackson are the deep people for the Irish. Not a particularly good punt by Moore. It's taken on the dead run by Troy Wilson, and Troy skips out of bounds. Got the 37, a 35-yard punt by Moore. A couple of times I've seen him, it looks to me like he hits the ball quite high. Well, he doesn't want to wait long enough for that ball. Of course, he's a big, lanky fellow. Maybe that's why he can kick it high, but he seems to be hitting the ball a good ways away from the ground. A tough kid for a punter. He was telling me yesterday against Florida, he got hit after he punted the ball. Somebody came right up under his jaw and knocked him cold. Says he's still sore. Juan Francisco is in the backfield for the Irish now with Pernell Taylor behind Andrzejczyk at quarterback. Terry rolls it out and sets the throw to the sidelines, and the pass is good to, no, no, no good. Reggie Ward out of bounds. Junior out of Long Beach, California. So that'll come back and make it second down and 10. Next week on ABC, Miami at West Virginia and Morgantown. And Oklahoma and Texas in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Jim Brandt will be in Dallas with Mike Adamley. Corey McFerrin and Lynn Swan, I guess it is, will be in uh, Morgantown. OU won today, 56 to 10. Second down and 10 for Notre Dame from the 37-yard line. Andrew Zach feels the pressure, gets his pass off. And it is incomplete off the hands of Tim Brown. And that's one that Timmy knows full well he should have caught. Because it was right in his hands. Looked like Tim was coming back at the ball too hard. He always set plant and come back to meet the ball and try to cut off the defender. That time it looked like he was coming back in a full sprint. The ball hit his hands like boards. Third and ten. This one is complete. And Milk Jackson will have the first down. He retreated a little bit, came back to the marker, and then turned back upfield to assure the first down right about the Irish 49-yard line. That's a fine throw by Andrzejczyk, too, because as soon as he released the ball, Cornelius Bennett was right in his face. All right, midfield. Watch Cornelius now. You've got to be wondering anytime it's third and ten, where is he? You saw him come in and make contact just as the ball was released. Perfectly thrown to Jackson. 
Oh, well, the Irish get another four snaps with it. Andrew Zach lobs the ball out to Anthony Johnson. Uh, no, it's not. It's uh, Juan Francisco. And they're kind of lucky they didn't lose that ball that time because it was pitched too late up in his face, and Juan had to really grapple with it to get control of it. Those are the plays where the running back comes around and loops and is waiting for that pitch, and he's thinking, please pitch it, please pitch it. He doesn't want to wait too late. It's like hanging a receiver up and making him stretch when you know you're going to get hit. Same type of thing with the pitch man. Gained about three on the play. Make it second down and seven. Reggie's open. Andrew Zach's got all day, and the ball is thrown finally behind Alvin Miller. <laughs> Miller was available and probably could have made the catch but comes away from that twisting ball and limps off the field. Reggie Ward was getting lonesome out there. There was not a soul within 10 yards of him. He had gone up and out toward the flag, and somebody forgot to cover him. You certainly can't fault protection on that one. No, you can't. But it's 940 to go in the ball game. He has to look around at all of his options, though, and look at all of his receivers. Whistle will stop him here for a moment. And a timeout is called by Alabama. With 9.40 to play in the ball game, Notre Dame has the ball, but they are still trailing 28 to 10. Crafty fellow. Rebuilt that Iowa football program. Third down and seven now for Notre Dame. And once again, the Irish are looking at third and long, trailing by 18 points. Andrew Zach. Gets his pass off down the sidelines, and it is incomplete. Intended for Tony Easton. Had no chance to get it, because once again, there was a linebacker in the face, Philip Brown in this case, of the Irish quarterback. And now the Irish will have to punt it away with nine and a half minutes to go. Passing situations, they move Philip Brown to a down lineman, make him a rush man. He was there, too. Little Mr. Poison back there, Greg Richardson, who broke one today for 66 yards and a TD. High kick by Sorensen. And a fair catch is called by Richardson. So Alabama will have the football first down at its own 17. A 31 yard punt. Iowa pins Alabama inside its 20. Never beat the Irish. There were two teams in Paul Bryant's brilliant coaching career and never beat that he wanted to. One was Notre Dame. The other was Alabama. Never beat Alabama when he coached against them. Bo Wright carries inside, picks up maybe a yard as he wiggles around to about the 18-yard line. And Alabama sitting on that 18-point cushion, playing very conservatively now and uh, no particular interest in hurrying either as we wind it down to nine minutes to play in the ball game then big plays that have been the difference the game has deteriorated some in its quality it's gotten a little ragged here in the second half this is Bobby Humphrey and Wally Klein grabs him and rides him down again right about the line of scrimmage maybe a loss of a yard How tough, up third and ten. how tough does it become now to take Notre Dame back and tell your players that things will come together? Well, I think they're you know, improved every week. I really do. Oh, they have. They really have. And this will be a fine football team. Lou Holtz is an outstanding coach, but it's taking time. Mike Shula, deep drop, trying to set up a screen for Bo Wright. He broke away from a couple of Notre Dame men, but one of them nicked him just enough. Number 37 got a piece of him. Dave Butler, and down he goes, and in comes the kicking team. But the cupboard was not full when Lou Holtz and company came in, uh, succeeding the previous administration. And just short, certain players in certain positions. Four years ago, when this freshman class was recruited, though, it was one of the best recruiting classes there. They just didn't develop as well as some other schools. The weight program was not a a requirement and they didn't get bigger stronger and didn't develop no pressure on Moore and a terrible kick for him that is not a good Chris Moore kick 
And it's going to be down right about midfield where Notre Dame once again will have good field position. And if they're going to make a move, it's now with 7.25 to play in the game. There's a ten around forever. And in this particular case, I guess in professional football, there would be a lot of time. It is not necessarily so, however, in college football, and particularly in this game where the Notre Dame team has been pretty well corralled in the second half. Totally, if you will, by the Alabama defense. It's a lot of time if you can throw. Andrzak is 7 for 16, Berlin 5 for 16. That's not, they aren't good come from behind numbers. Andrzak rolls it and goes deep with it, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Freddie Robinson, his second of the day. Well, he's the leading interceptor on the Alabama defensive team, and he is a talent. Again, he reads and reacts as quickly as you can find a cornerback. Watch this now. Furline locked on the receiver right now, still looking in that direction. Read by Robinson, who's just playing a zone out there on the corner. Wide as the widest, deep as the deepest. That's his assignment. He stood out, read the the eyes and the ball all the way, and made the interception. Andrews, not Furline. So. Alabama's got the ball back. First down at the 33. Bell coming across in motion. Pitch it to Humphrey. And Humphrey will move it for three yards, maybe, up to about the 36. What's up, Well, you know that they're going to be happy because uh, these kids have lived uh, with that specter over the years of never having done it. And you've got to let him have a little room now to be heard. It was hammered home this week. It Everybody kept was. saying they were 0-4 against Notre Dame, and they kept saying, well, we haven't played Notre Dame. Schuler rolls it out. Gets a great block, gets his pass off. The pass is, did he catch that? My goodness, Howard Cross has just inserted himself into the passing game for Alabama. He caught an 11 yard touchdown pass earlier and he went six feet into the air to pull that one down. I want you to watch Wes Neighbors. Neighbors comes back and gets a block. He's an All-American. He is an All-American. Started 38 to 39 games in center. That ball hit the ground. Howard Cross has become a receiver. One completion before today, one catch. First down for the Tide at the Irish inside the 49, and this is Bobby Humphrey breaking loose and picking up another first down at the Notre Dame 33 and then fumbles the ball away, and somebody, I believe Steve Lawrence, comes up with it. Again, it was a fumble resulting from second effort. So once again, the Irish defensive unit has done its job. The thing about second effort is you're running, you've got your body in sync, you're looking for rhythm, and all of a sudden after the first hit, then you try to get something else, and you relax your arms, and you start driving your legs trying to pull away, and that relaxed situation with your arms causes the fumble. Notre Dame offense now, which has been pretty quiet. Steve Bellis is in there at quarterback now. Big sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona, making his first appearance. Gives it to Tim Brown, and Brown is lucky to get a yard out of it. At 5.50 to go. Here's Humphrey now. This is the play before. Humphrey puts a move on. Now look, now he's trying to get the drive out of his legs. Boy, he's got it too. There's the ball. Now the ball's loose right now. Yep. To give you an idea of what Notre Dame's uh, problems are at running back, Brown, Tim Brown, and Mark Green today, both of them, four of 11. In other words, the two backs, eight carries and 22 yards. Well, and they've used 11 ball carriers, too. That yep. tells you there's no super back in touch with the game. And with 548 to play and 18 points down, they're almost committed to the pass now. Dallas options down the line and is thrown down. Rolling for a couple of yards as Tommy Cole, defensive tackle, a sophomore out of Jasper, Alabama, brings him down. Oh, 
So you really do have to go to the air. I can't understand why they're running options now with 531 left in the ball game. Third five and a half, call it six. Ellis throws to the sidelines. Penalty flag is back up field. The ball is intercepted by number 34, Ricky Thomas, the strong safety. Let's see about the penalty. That may well be against Notre Dame for holding. If so, Alabama will have the ball. They will have the ball. So, Freddie Robinson has picked off two, and now Ricky Thomas gets one. That makes five turnovers for Notre Dame. Story of the game, pressure on the quarterback, throws off balance. There's no velocity on the ball. It's not thrown well, and it's thrown behind Jackson, the re intended receiver. Ricky Thomas, leading tackler coming into this ball game, and that's unusual for a strong safety on an Alabama-type team. But he plays up close behind that line of scrimmage and offers a lot of run support. Tide owns it now at the Notre Dame 42 with five minutes to play in the game. Shula to Bo Wright. And he grinds for one. The San Diego Chargers will be going north to the northwest to play the Seattle Seahawks, and you'll see it Monday night here on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Chargers trying to get things back on track against the Seahawks, who whom is one of the principal challengers out of the American League West, American Conference West. Second down, make it eight. And Shula gives it to Humphrey. And Humphrey is down to the 35. Or a pickup of close to six yards. See, Humphrey has done a large amount of work today because of the injury to Gene Jelks. See, if, if you had Jelks and Humphrey both alive, things might be worse because, if anything, uh, Jelks might be a half a step faster than Humphrey, though not quite as big. But, you know, he had five yards gained already before he got by his own lineman. That's true. That's how far back they're pushing Notre Dame now. Humphrey, 18 carries and 70 yards on the day. Third down and three for Alabama. Shula got a problem, but ducks away from it. But the pursuit coming from the rear gets in. Number 87, Tom Gorman, the nose tackle, made the hit on Shula. That will bring up fourth and the punting team. Seven yards. Aggies rolling today over Texas Tech, 45-8 in the Southwest Conference. Wilson and Jackson are the deep people for Notre Dame as Chris Moore is in the punt. His last one was 29, but he shoots this one high. Way up, and it's out of bounds. Coffin corner. That's called pooching. He pooched that thing down into the corner and got it to take that side bounce right out of bounds. 40-yard pooch out of bounds inside the three. This is a solid football team from top to bottom. Kicking game is sound. Offense and defense extremely quick. They'll take some handling. It was interesting, though, today that uh, they had their point explosion in the first half, whereas in their previous four games, they've done everything in the second half. That's really true. They've scored 78 points this year in the second half coming in to this ball game this afternoon. Andrzak is at quarterback, hands the ball off to his uh, fullback, Braxton Banks, a freshman out of Hayward, California. And Banks has something out of it up to the nine-yard line. So that's a little more than a six-yard pickup, and there's an Alabama man hurt on the play. And there's your time remaining in the ball game. Desmond Holloman, linebacker, number 48, who works at the inside position. We've got a timeout in his behalf, 2.43 to play. Desmond Holloman is still down on the field. They're being very tender with him. And some of the crowd now starting to leave with two minutes and 43 seconds to play in the ball game, feeling that the home team, Alabama, has things in hand and is about to post its first victory ever over the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. 
And uh, based on what I have seen today, uh, Tim Brandt, I would say Alabama probably deserves that number two spot in the poll. They do. It's the highest ranking Alabama's had since 1980. They certainly do look like they deserve that. Golly, uh, you know, they're, they're just strong. They're fast. They're big. The skilled position people are as, as good as you find. You've got pursuit people in the on the defense. Bennett is phenomenal. I can't believe Cornelius Bennett. They've brought a stretcher out now, and that's bad news because oftentimes that will indicate back or neck injury in a player, and you'd never, ever want to see that happen. Now, and another reason for concern is the way that Coach Perkins came out, too, onto the field. So time is still out in behalf of Desmond Holloman. A 28 to 10 ball game with 243 to play. And now let's go to New York and Jim Lampley. This week on ABC Sports. Keith. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much. And uh, still they are being very gentle with Desmond Holloman. We'll be back in just a moment. Uh, Holloman number uh, seven, uh, 48 for Alabama. And he's been down now for the better part of three or four minutes having been injured in, in this play. Now you see him up there in the corner and you watch very carefully. It's difficult to see what might have happened to him. He comes up in the run support and you'll see him. He he puts his head right in here with the the oncoming ball carrier and the blocker right there makes the contact and it looks as if well, it is difficult to tell what happened. Yep. But he led with his head. That was obvious. You could see that and they are still working on him gingerly. So we're still waiting to see whether or not he'll be able to leave or whether they'll have to take him off. Here's Jim. Holiday is moving his hand. Holloman is moving his hands. He also, Keith, was talking to the trainers. And that's a good sign. He is conscious and he is moving his, his hands. Well, if it is a neck injury, you don't want to mess with it because you just never know. There might be some nerve damage there. And if there is, you certainly don't want to do anything to aggravate it. And that's why both teams are now off the field talking to their respective coaches. And Desmond is being handled very carefully with a core of doctors around him. A football game in which he participated well and in which his team is winning by a score of 28 to 10. And today's ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to test drive a new Go Anywhere Nissan Pathfinder at your Nissan dealer now. By Cigna a leader in insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services. By the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. And by Castrol Oil, the motor oil designed and engineered for today's smaller cars. Holloman now is off the field. And we're about ready to go through the last two minutes and 43 seconds of this ball game. It's all hope the young man's going to be all right. It is scary, and it is certainly one of the dangerous parts of this football game. It's a, a late contact game sport. Is, late in the game is on a hot day like this, really tough time. And you made mention of the fact that fatigue oftentimes leads to uh, injury. Yes. You get just a little tired. You get just a little careless. You tend to relax, perhaps, in a moment when you should not. You cease moving when perhaps uh, you should be moving. All of those little things add up into perhaps what we have just seen. Today, Holloman had three tackles and one forced fumble. Notre Dame's football, second down and three. Long three from their nine. Andrew Zach turns it up the field and will not get the first down. I don't think. His forward progress is close to the yard marker. But it'll be third and short of lead. Now they want to Bring the chains on, I guess. Slaughter made the tackle. Clock shows 2.15 to play. Four yards, first down Notre Dame. Well, for Notre Dame, they'll go back, they'll watch the film, they'll reevaluate themselves. There'll be another week for Lou Holtz and his staff to sit down and see what they're doing correctly and what they're doing incorrectly, where they can improve, and they'll have to go back to the drawing board. For Alabama, they've beaten three big-time opponents. They crushed Vanderbilt, and they just keep rolling. They did get their first down on the measurement. Andrew Zach pitches the ball. They're running the ball with uh, Juan Francisco carrying and getting out of bounds up around the 19-yard line. That stops the clock at 148. 
Notre Dame will be playing next Pittsburgh at home. Pitt, a team that's uh, coming right along, while Alabama will be going home to homecoming next Saturday in Tuscaloosa and playing Memphis State. Then on October 18, they're scheduled for the annual or the every other year junket to Knoxville, Tennessee, which can be a treacherous place. Second down, four for Notre Dame. Andrew Zach again options the ball, hands it inside. Clock is now running at a minute 40. And Al, do you have something on uh, Desmond Holloman? Thanks. Well, well, Keith, really not too much. As you might expect, there was a rather solemn group of uh, medical staff and uh, trainer-type people behind the bench. They did say that there was some kind of concern over pain in his neck. That was the only uh, words that Desmond was able to express to them about where he was feeling the pain. It's somewhere in his neck, and obviously he's on the way to the hospital for some uh, x-rays and so forth. Back to you. Thank you. Third down and two. Andrew Zach again. Options. Turns it upfield. Runs for his first down. And the clock will stop at 110 while they move the chain. So Notre Dame, uh, obviously feeling the game is gone, is just grinding along here and will spend the time out to talk about things now. The MVPs of today's ball game for Notre Dame, Mike Kovalevsky, their outstanding inside linebacker, leader of that defensive unit, and Cornelius Bennett, the linebacker who plays anywhere he pleases for <laughs> Alabama. And the respective universities will receive from Chevrolet in the name of those two players $1,000 for their general scholarship fund. So some young person somewhere along the way at either Notre Dame or Alabama will benefit from the performances of Mike Kovaleski and Cornelius Bennett today of the generosity of Chevrolet. Mike Kovaleski, 11 tackles. Cornelius Bennett, everywhere. He was effective even when he didn't make the tackle or a sack. Newspaper writer asked Cornelius Bennett the other day, he says, when you were growing up, was there somebody in the neighborhood that was a bully or bigger than everybody else? And he said, me. <laughs> well, I don't imagine he had to call for help too many times. In his age group, anyway. The ball is on the 24-yard line. First down and 10 for Notre Dame. A minute 10 to play in the game. And most of the excitement, really, was in the first half. Andrew Zach back to pass the ball is going to be sacked and dropped back on the eight yard line. The Alabama defense forcing and forcing and forcing and forcing the ball roll loose but was covered by James Bogus, the center for the Irish. And so they move from the 24, a loss of 16. Just relentless. Both Notre Dame quarterbacks have to be gun shy right now. Burline and this one, Andrew Zach. As the pressure just keeps coming, he's trying to regain his balance, but once one gets you and throws you off, there's two or three more right behind him. The tide keeps rolling. Clock is rolling now and is going to run out. And the Crimson Tide of Alabama is going to be one and four. They have finally beaten the fighting Irish of Notre Dame as the clock is stopped here for a moment on a penalty with 15 seconds remaining. A personal foul is now called against Alabama. And if you think there was a party out under the oak trees before the game, you all ought to come see what's going to happen after the game. Because this is the kind of a thing that is a burden to the loyal legions as tradition laden as Alabama is, just as it would be for Notre Dame. Finally, the Crimson Tide has broken through and won. And Mike Shula was right. This group had never played Notre Dame, just as none of the Irish players had played Alabama. Steve Bellis is in there at quarterback for what is probably the final snap of the ball game. off with it and is finally put on the ground at about the 38 39 40 yard line and the clock stops with three seconds there'll be one more snap now they let it run out ball game is over Perkins and his fighters have done it. 
They have defeated Notre Dame. Good football game. There will be other times because these teams will continue their series. They're talking. Mike Shula and Al Ray Perkins. And your final score. Alabama 28, Notre Dame 10. Stay tuned for updated scores and highlights of today's football action on College Football Scoreboard with Jim Lampley. Travel arrangements made through. Promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports.